my recording. Oh, hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So nice to see you around these parts. I always got a little bit of joy in my day when I get to talk to you face to face, laptop to laptop, screen to screen. It's always a fun little experience for me. First things first, before I start off this episode, I wanna give a shout out to the newest Patreon subscriber, uh, Get Max or Max, depending upon which one you prefer. Thank you for becoming a Patreon subscriber. Your support means a whole lot to me. If you're not already a subscriber for either the channel or for Patreon, you can do both now. You have the power, you have the laptop, you have the capability, and if you don't, that's cool too. I'm just glad that you're watching. Today's episode, we're gonna talk about a topic that somebody on Twitter actually DM'd me about. Uh, fun story, I do actually read my DMs and I reply when I think I can help. If I don't reply to you, it means that it's th it doesn't mean that I don't wanna to talk to you, it means that I don't think that I can help you. And it's just my fear that stops me from talking to you. Somebody on Twitter asked me, uh, what is that weird, wh why in your function are you showing two uh, curly braces in the arguments? Like, what is that? Like, what is that weird syntax? And I realized that I've never actually talked what is talk what is. I've never actually talked about what destructuring is, and that's what that feature is, destructuring. So today, class, you're not class, I'm the class. We're all the classes. Today we're going to talk about destructuring, both array destructuring and object destructuring. And if you take off your glasses, then you've also destructured type vision, because now I'm seeing four things at once. Sometimes I'm honestly surprised that you watch, because I don't always make sense. But I guess sometimes I do, so there is some value in watching this uh, channel. Should we get into the code? So, today we are going to talk about destructuring assignments. There is a lovely Mozilla Developer Network article all about that, which if you want to do some of your own reading later on, you're welcome to do. But for now, we're just gonna do some live coding together because that's how I enjoy teaching the most. <laughs> uh, I've done a little code ahead of time, which is usually against my better judgment because I like to have you see me think in real time, but honestly it took me way longer than it should have to think about some of my favorite foods. Uh, this is me sharing a little bit about you, that I love bagels more than anything in the world, probably to an unhealthy amount. Uh, I love pizza, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, grilled cheese, and eggs. Uh, both the ones in the shell and I guess in the yolk as well. Uh, so let's say I wanted to log bagel. Uh, I can of course do uh, food zero, and that's fine, and that works. However, there's no semantic meaning behind this zero index lookup. So with a array destructuring assignment, what you can actually do is reassign a variable from an array into another local variable. So what I can actually do here is in some ways mirror the object on the left-hand side that is on the right-hand side. So I'm actually gonna say bagel, equals food. So what this is doing is it's taking the first item of the array of food and putting it into a local variable bagel. So if I were to put this in my good old terminal, actually in node, uh, plus like bagel, bagel, lovely. Let's kill that so I can back alive. Look at that, that's sweet. Uh, cool, now that's fine, I have my bagel. And also, I can actually name this whatever I want. So actually, I can name this, um, uh, whoops, I can name this my favorite uh, number one food. That's still fine. I can do the same thing for the second one, number two food. So now this is pizza. And so on and so on. But let's say I don't really care about my third, fourth, or fifth most favorite foods. I can actually uh, just collect it into the rest. And this is a uh, splat argument that is collecting the rest of the array elements onto there. So I believe if I do the rest here, I'm not really sure how console log works all the time, but uh, there we have bagel, pizza, and then the array of those things. Okay, so it works as I had hoped without really checking things. So this is very simple array destructuring. What's not, you, you might wanna use array destructuring. Well, if you're using an array, then you have your own reasons for using that type of data structure, but when you store things in an array, what you let a consuming application do is define the local variable names. And we'll see how this is different in object destruction in a little bit. 
but it means that um, I can essentially rename this to whatever I want because I'm just doing a index based lookup. If I had done uh, food equals uh, bagel, bagel, uh, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. We'll call this um, food array, an array of food, a smorgasbord of food. Before we move on to object destructuring, let's, let's actually just show two other features of array destructuring. Uh, one is the ability to skip items in the destructure. So let's say I don't really care about the third best food, which is PB and J, which is honestly a tragedy. But you can actually do this, and that is a hole in the destructuring, and that's that works fine. So if I were to uh, console this all out again, la la la. Kill node and go back in. Bagel, pizza, grilled cheese, eggs. We've skipped PB and J here. And then also what we could do is let's say um, we're skipping PB and J, we're skipping grilled cheese, we're skipping eggs. Uh, you can actually have another default value if there is, there's two for five items in this array, and I'm restructuring one, two, three, four, five. I actually do one more and do what, and actually have a default uh, value here that will be set if that destructured value does not exist in the array. So, great, a lot of fun. Let's move on to object destructuring. So we have this here. Let's actually go back to my previous example because I like it a lot more. Uh, so we have food object. We have food object, which is number one food, number two food pizza. <clears throat> to destructure off of an object requires a similar way of doing syntax as in array destructuring. So you can actually have here um, the left hand side kind of mirrors what's on the right hand side. But the difference with an object destructuring as opposed to array destructuring is you're actually pulling off properties off of the object. So here I want to pull off number one food from food object. So this is saying from food object, take off this object. And as you can already tell, so let's actually copy and paste this, uh, right, because const is fun. And then we do number one food is bagel. Now, uh, as I said before, object destructuring kind of prescribes the properties that you want to take off of it. Um, if you want, you could rename this. That is supported. You actually say that this is actually going to be called uh, bagel. So you can actually say that we take out this property, rename it to a local variable bagel. So we can go here and we can do console log bagel. That's going to be bagel. There we go. Cool. Um, that's cool. Let's say we want to take off the number two food, obviously, as well as that. Let's say there's, there's a number three food that I was expecting. Uh, and I'm trying to pull it off, by default, that's going to be undefined because there is no property, number three food, of called number three food on the food object. So what you can actually do when you're destructuring is actually set a default value like an array. So you can say number three food is uh, PB and J. I can't believe I just looked that up. I should know that off the top of my head. So when I copy and paste this, PB and J, number three food. So a nice default. And let's see if uh, number three foods, you can also do a rename to PBJ and then also get a default value. So now this is PB and J, like that. Now this is cool, but where object destruction becomes more powerful is when you kind of use it with uh, functions. So let's say um, print foods. I'm gonna say food obj or you know, uh, data. And we just want to do, we want to console log. And we know that when we call print foods, we're going to call it with food object, right? So we just want to log, you know, data dot number one food, uh, data dot number two food. And this should all work fine. Gosh, I got to keep saving because it's not an actual file. This will all work fine. But this is kind of annoying to have to retype this. So what we could do is we could, of course, do the destructuring inside of here. So let me just do some VS Code magic to make things 
look a little bit faster. So you can do this equals data. And then you know, we'll count it right there. It's cool, cool. So now if I do this, inside a node, bagel pizza. Now this is cool, but again, I'm not using this data object anywhere. So what you can actually do is destructure straight in the function argument. So I can grab this and move this right in there. Gosh darn it, stop saving Harry. Uh, and that's gonna work as well. I've now destructured in the argument and I have all the same, oops, there you go, big old pizza. Okay, so everything is working as expected. And of course in here, you can also do the same thing here and say number three food, and you're gonna set, you know, default in here if you want, all the same things to make it easy to use in the arguments. And one of the best things about object destructuring when used in a function context is it's kind of a way to cheat in JavaScript to have named arguments. Um, if you ever play with Python, you would know that Python has the ability to have a function that has named arguments. So when you actually call a function, uh, you can say arg1, uh, arg2, and when you call that, in Python, you can kind of do uh, arg1 equals foo and then arg2 equals blah. Uh, with having a object given to a function in Java, this is not real, this is not real code, ignore it. When you pass an object into a function in JavaScript, you can kind of emulate that same behavior. We're actually providing kind of built-in documentation about what the shape of the object should be by doing the destructuring in the function. Now, just like with the rate of structure, you can also do the same things as you could before. You can also, um, let's get rid of this pseudocode. You can also uh, collect um, all others onto things. So what's this button do? Oh, that's cool. Uh, but if I had more arguments on here, I could do number three food is PB and J, and then number for food is grilled cheese. So then when I call all this, I should see uh, big old pizza and then grilled cheese. So let's restart node, big old pizza, number four food, grilled cheese. Cool. Uh, and what's also neat about object destructuring is that you can go deep dish food is pizza. <laughs> That's pretty clay. Uh, so what you can actually do here is go here and say, uh, I want the deep property. And then off of that deep property, I want the dish. Is it deep dish? God, I can't even remember dish property. And then from there, I want the food property. And then I can then log food. So now if I again log all this fun, Pizza, because I'm taking the deep property off the main object and the dish property off that nested object and the food property off of that. So you can get kind of wild with object destructuring if you so desire. Uh, yeah, so that's destructuring. You have now destructed your way of looking about objects and those things like it. Uh, it works in all modern browsers, does not work in IE, no surprise there. If you use Babel, then it'll work fine in IE because it's a pretty simple way to kind of transform that code to just be the full data.foo lookups. Um, hopefully think about why you want to use this structuring. It should help you when you're writing your own JavaScript code. Uh, thinking about when you're storing data and then trying to provide an API to some user, how you want that user to consume it. Does it make sense for it to be an array where they can kind of define how those variables will be themselves? Or do you actually want to define the shape of the object such that when a function is consuming it, they actually know all the properties that that function needs to actually operate correctly. So it's more tools in your arsenal, no need to go crazy on it. Um, I do like destructuring in function arguments um, and not including just the options object because then I know for certainty that nothing inside of that function is using that big object, just the properties themselves. So definitely uh, things to consider when writing your own code. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something new. Uh, become a YouTube subscriber, become a Twitter subscriber, become a uh, Patreon subscriber. If I had more hands, I'd probably be a spider or a tarantula. Tarantulas are a type of spider or is a spider a type of tarantula? I'm not sure about that hierarchy. You know, you could probably destructure a spider eight times if it had all of its legs, but that would kind of be mean 
to pluck them out the spider. So don't do that. Don't do spider destruction. That's probably a bad thing to do. I'll see you again later.